After the liberation of the concentration camps, there were thousands of prisoners who were starving, struggling with their health, and also many were dying from diseases. It was the Allied liberators who were left to clean up the horrific environments of places such as Auschwitz and Bergen-Belsen. The British at Belsen found over 10,000 unburied bodies that they had to then bury with dignity. The relief on the prisoners' faces when they realised they were going to be liberated was captured on film, but many prisoners were so terrified of soldiers that they could not believe what was happening and they were securing their freedom. After they were cared for and were given food, they were then released and many headed back to their homes and found that their houses had been destroyed and many had been stolen by other families. But there was one former Polish concentration camp prisoner of war who then, after being freed, went on a killing spree of his own and he murdered a German family who had provided him with shelter and food. Today we look at the brutal execution of Peter Kemi. Remember to support our channel. Please make sure to subscribe. Peter Kemi was born in Tarnopol in which was the Second Poland Republic on the 18th of June 1918. During the Second World War, the Germans invaded this area in 1941 and they committed huge-scale deportations and killings. In 1941 they killed 2,000 Jewish people and then created the Tarnopol Ghetto for the Jews who remained inside of the city. In this ghetto the mortality rate was huge and many were forced to bury the dead in huge graves. There were also selections that took place, with prisoners being sent straight to Belzec extermination camp, where they were driven into the gas chambers as soon as they arrived. A few hundred people managed to survive by living in hidden places around the town. But Peter Kemi was one of those who was deported to a concentration camp during the Second World War, as he was detained by the Nazis. It's not really known for certain which concentration camp that Peter Kemi was taken to, however it's possible that it may have been Mauthausen. This is because this was one of the major camp complexes liberated by the American army in May 1945, and it was said Peter Kemi was freed by the American soldiers in May 1945. It's also possible that he may have been held inside of Dachau, as at the end of April this was liberated by the Americans. Also after his liberation, Kemi was found wandering around Germany in different areas. With this it's possible that Dachau was where he was imprisoned, as this is also found in Germany, as opposed to Mauthausen, which is found in Austria. Dachau was also not thousands of miles away from the place of his own execution. But inside of the concentration camps, it's certain that Peter Kemi would have seen untold horror and evil on a daily basis. Chances are that his family was split up, and many of them were killed inside gas chambers, or by poor conditions and execution. This was incredibly common at camps, and executions were carried out in public at roll call yards for those who were guilty of infringing the camp's rules. The complete conditions and horrors of the concentration camps had a hugely profound impact on the prisoners for the rest of their lives. Some could not cope with the loss inflicted by the Nazis and Germans after the war, would also become further victims as they took their own lives. The horrors of the camps were told at trials after the war, but for many people who were released, they lost their homes, many of which had been stolen with new families living inside of them. Also, they had to cope with their family members and friends dying and being victims of the extermination and concentration camps. The aftermath for many of the prisoners was too much to cope with, and reprisals by former prisoners did take place. At Dachau there was a true reign of terror inflicted onto the prisoners every day and many struggled to cope after liberation, living with their freedom. Peter Kemi following his liberation spent months wandering round Germany. It's not known what he was doing there or where he was intending on going. He may have been trying to find his way back home or may have been exploring his options but all we know is that he was wandering around Germany for months after the war had come to an end. Maybe more could be done to have helped him as a displaced person, and if this would have happened, then maybe he would not have committed his awful crimes. Many prisoners of war also had very anti-German sentiment because of the treatment at the hands of guards they suffered from, and many believed that all German civilians and citizens were ardent Nazis, and people who supported Hitler's regime and propped up his regime. There were many attacks against Germans because of this, by soldiers and also freed prisoners of war. But in December 1945, Peter Kamey in the freezing cold German winter and the snow was found wandering aimlessly inside Allied-occupied Germany. 
He was found by a family who offered him kind shelter for the evening and food. Peter accepted and went with this family, and for the night they gave him a warm evening meal, and also a bed, sheltering him from the freezing cold winter, which could easily have killed him. After the family went to sleep, Peter could not settle, and he went outside and he found an axe or a hatchet. What he did next would secure his fate. He took the axe and went back inside the home, and then he brutally murdered the couple who offered him shelter, and also their young daughter, whilst they slept in their beds. It's likely that he inflicted a brutal and barbaric death for these, with them being bludgeoned to death with the axe. Peter Kemi then went on the run, and after these crimes were discovered, he was arrested by the occupation police force. He had committed a brutal crime, and technically as the war was over, this was treated as a bloody act of revenge against the German people. This made him also a murderer, and as he committed these crimes within the US occupation zone, then he was brought to trial in front of a US military court. Inside the town of Oxenfurt, he was tried, and interestingly on the 6th of August 1946, Peter Kemi was found guilty of three counts of premeditated murder. This meant that he must have had some degree of planning when he entered the home, knowing that he was going to commit a murder, or a killing. But because of this, he was sentenced to death. On the 21st of March 1947, he was executed by a firing squad at Landsberg Prison. This prison was where hundreds of Nazi war criminals were executed following the Second World War, on gallows, but Kemi was executed by firing squad. This has been considered over the centuries a more honourable way to die, and as a common criminal this is why he was executed in this manner, as he was not a war criminal. He was brought into a clearing at the prison, and the courtyard where a firing range had been made. At one end stood the American shooters and soldiers that would take his life, and at the other end was a wooden stake with sandbags behind, to protect from ricochets. Peter Kamey was led from his cell, flanked by American military policemen, and was then tied to the stake, and was accompanied by a priest. He was secured to the stake by a rope, and was tied around his legs and also his arms, which left him a target for the firing squad, and he could not move. His sentence was read out before the firing squad then readied, and they waited for their signal. When it was given they shot straight into Peter Kemi, and he was killed instantly. His story is one in which a victim became a victimiser. What he had seen and witnessed inside the concentration camps, it's probable led him to enact revenge on any Germans. There is no doubt that he would have been treated terribly and awfully inside of the camps, but what he did was not right, and was an act of bloody murder and reprisal. It's likely he developed an anti-German ideology because of his treatment, and his execution was one which was rare at Landsberg in the years after the war. He was not a war criminal, and was executed that day, but he was a common criminal, and a murderer. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.